Today, I'm going to show you guys three reverb tricks that changed my life. Reverb is a very tricky thing. It's a very hard thing to manage, and it usually is the number one cause of muddiness in tracks from amateur producers. So this video will be big help to you because I'm going to show you some ways that you can play around with your reverb and have fun with it and really become one with your reverb so that you can become more comfortable with using it uh, and really wrap your head around what reverb can do. But not only that, I guarantee that if you watch this entire video from beginning to end without skipping any parts of it, that your reverb game will become at least 20% better. The first reverb trick is side chaining to the main signal that you're adding reverb to uh, so you would do this a lot on leads especially vocals and drop leads and how it works is you want to grab a vocal or a lead so I have a vocal here I am young and I am on my way and you could hear that's completely dry and what you do for this trick is you go to the mixing track and bus it to an empty bus and the first thing you're gonna add is a reverb plugin of choice. I like Vintage Valhalla Reverb. And then you add a good plugin for side chaining. So I'm gonna use FabFilter Pro C2 because it has a really strong side chain capability. And what you do is you side chain directly to the signal. So I'm gonna side chain directly to this vocal. And what happens now is every time the lead happens, or the vocal in this case, the reverb will go away, it'll duck away. But then, in between each breath and in between each word, the reverb will come back in. So this way, the vocal and the reverb aren't competing for space and it actually makes, and it makes the sound overall a little bit tighter and a little bit more aggressive. And you wouldn't do this on every vocal, but in more aggressive house songs and electronic songs, this is a really fun trick to play around with. I am young and I am on my way, my way. So right now the vocal and the reverb are playing together, but if I increase the side chaining, I am young and I am on my way, my way. You can hear that every time the vocal goes away, the reverb increases. And this, like I said, just creates a lot of movement in the reverb. It's not static and it's really fun to play around with. It is kind of difficult to get the correct side chaining settings so that it actually sounds good without pumping too much, but it's something you could play around with and really have a good time with. I did the same thing over here to this lead. <laughs> where every time the lead happens, it ducks away the reverb, but I got the settings to a point where it actually sounds good and fluent with each other. So that you get a nice moderately pumping sound for when the drop happens. The next trick that truly changed my life is reverse reverb swells, and they sound like this. So the way we make those happen is you get your lead or your vocal. I like doing these with vocals and leads. And what I do is copy it and put it on a new track. This way it's not as messy and you can really get creative with the little vocal piece here. And so what I do is I cut it down to the very first word or the very first note of your lead. It's kind of hard to do if there's too many notes involved in the lead. So you just chop it down to a single note. So there's a good note there. And I'm gonna get rid of the delay. Sometimes delay can make it a little tricky, so I just turn it off. And I get a reverb plugin of choice, and I put the wet all the way up, and I give myself a good long decay. So you can hear that nice tail of reverb. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the volume up a little bit because that reverb can be a little quiet. And I'm just gonna bounce it in place. We can stretch it out like that. And now here's my reverb tail. And so then what we do is we double click the reverb tail, functions, reverse, and now we have a reverse reverb swell. And then what you do is you line that up with your vocal or your lead, line it up on the very beginning of it. And what this reverb swell is gonna do is it's gonna introduce the listener and make them know that something's coming. And so this one's a little flat. So what I'm gonna do is just fade it all the way in like that. And then we'll get something like this. You get that nice, beautiful swell. The third reverb trick to truly change my life 
is called drone and you can do drones with any instrument you can set your mind to besides any basses don't want to make a drone with a bass wouldn't make sense and it would just not sound good for this sound i'm just going to get a basic little saw and i have it set on two octaves here to sound like this And like I said, that could be any sound. That could be a vocal chop. That could be any pluck you could imagine or pad. And then what you do is you grab a reverb plugin of choice. So I have the Serum reverb plugin here. You put the mix all the way up and you give yourself a decent size and a really long decay. And then what you do with something like this is you sit it in the background of a verse or a build up or a drop and you get a nice pleasant sound that sounds like this. So this part of the song would have a vocal and that reverb hum would really just make the vocal dance and come to life. So those are the tricks I have for you. If you guys want to learn more about songwriting and music production, melody writing, chord writing, and sound design, come join me in the EDM bootcamp. I left a link for you in the description below. And for a limited time only, I opened up private lessons. And I have a link for private lessons in the description below as well. See you guys in the next video.